But now, have you ever had a nutty Irishman to drink? It's a drink, no. <laughs> <laughs> to drink? No, I, I haven't. Okay. You can see what you were setting me up okay. for. I didn't fall for it. Okay, so now, this is a very easy drink to make. You have to have hot coffee. Of course. And you have to have um, Bailey's Irish cream, mm -hmm. a little Kahlua, which is, you know, coffee-flavored liqueur, and some uh, Frangelico, which is sort of like Hazelnut, a... Hazelnut, isn't it? Oh, no, it's more almond. Oh, all right. Okay, so one ounce of each. Now, okay. you can eyeball it or you can measure. Oh. I just... No, that's well, yours. You have your own. We're not redundant. No, oh, we, don't. we don't have a redundancy. No. Oh, my goodness. Here, you make it. All right, I'll do Here, it. Here, add the Kahlua. I have to add a little more of the <laughs> Irish Baileys. I okay. mean, who really uses a shot glass at home? I don't. I don't. I, you know, you pour, you look. Yep, now, that's it. now coffee. Now coffee. Five ounces, but I would... I, okay, that's, that's enough. one, two, three, four, no, five. Too much. I don't see. I don't like that much coffee in mine. I like more mm, liquor. I do because you then do? it evens you out. Okay, so the how much? Takes you how down much? And the coffee how much you up, whipped cream? You're in the middle. How much whipped cream? A lot. Um, yeah, a lot. A lot. In. I've been told that I should go get this ready whip. Oh, oh. that's a really because oh. if for the, apparently there's some people watching Here, you the can show make that one. are kind of trashy. Here, you make. They don't make their own. Here. All right. We'll make another one of those, okay? Right. Show the, we can show the difference between the real whipped cream right. and, and the ready whip. And the ready proper whip. amount of coffee. You pour the coffee, so okay. I can Wow. See, that's prettier than mine. There we go. Okay, but we can no, make... No, but yours will taste We better. can make it even prettier with a little green oh sanding my God, sugar. Oh, darling. Look at that. <laughs> oh, I don't want to drink it. <laughs> Drink it and behave yourself. <laughs> well, I, I thought the not behaving myself was why you had me. Let's see. Mm. Mm. Hold on. Well, mm. see, now mine looks like cottage cheese. <laughs> Doesn't taste like it, though. It's good, huh? Here are two Jameson cocktails to try this St. Patrick's Day. Pour into a cocktail shaker one and a half ounces of Jameson Irish whiskey, one ounce cranberry juice, half ounce simple syrup, half ounce lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce raspberry puree. Add ice and one and a half ounces raspberry liqueur to the shaker. Shake well. Pour into a tall glass filled with crushed ice. Garnish with fresh raspberries and a mint leaf. This might be my new favorite drink. Add ice to a cocktail shaker. Pour in one and a half ounces Jameson Irish whiskey, one ounce of fresh lemon juice, one ounce simple syrup, one and a quarter ounces peach puree. Shape well and pour into an old-fashioned glass. Garnish with a slice of peach. Oh, so good. You're really you know, Scottish? Scotch-Irish. Scotch-Irish, yeah. okay. And so, do you have corned beef and cabbage at home? Yes, you do? yes. I don't really prepare it, but I'm hoping to maybe learn a good well, recipe Well, we made a brisket um, uh, two weeks ago. We brined mm. our own Ooh, beef. Fine. Yeah, do you remember, everybody remember brining the beef? <laughs> yes? So this might make you very envious if you haven't. Oh, here, we have a little clip of me pouring the brine over this beautiful beef and it's been in the refrigerator under a weight for two weeks. And it's uh, just as, as gorgeous as can be. It smells really good. And we're going to now uh, put it into this pot. We okay. need a covered so pot. something I can do here? Or? Well, you can hold the pot just so I don't... Hold the pot. Yeah, okay. hold the pot. I can do ah. that. I can do that. There. Oh, look, it fits pretty nicely. Yeah, really and nice. now you can pour that water just okay. to cover All right. the there beef. Oh, here, just, yeah, like, like oh, yeah, there. Oh, okay. yeah, that's probably better. <laughs> Thanks. And we have um, two stalks of celery, two carrots, and one onion. And I would stud these onions with cloves. They haven't been studded, but do you know what that means? Oh, uh, yes, yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and so you turn this on, bring it to a boil, cover it, and then simmer it for about three and a half hours. And um, just until the meat is tender. So that's... While that's being done, we've already we've already cooked it, and uh, when the meat comes out, mm. here it is. Let it rest for about 30 minutes before you try to slice it. So there's the meat. Mm, looks it looks pretty good. They've trimmed it in the kitchen, and then you have to steam the vegetables, and you're going to peel turnips. Here you can okay. peel a couple turnips. I like so. turnips, carrots. Um, onions and cabbage mm. in my, mm. in, with my uh, corned well, beef. I always like root vegetables. So, so you know, th I don't think this was really the national dish of Ireland for no, to celebrate. No, I think they, they got a potato and maybe a 
Yeah. Right, and a piece soda, of cabbage, so, right? Or some soda bread. Yeah. I, I want to have some of that later. And, uh, oh, the, oh, the soda bread is so good. I'll give you a piece, too. See how you do that. Oh, anything. Oh, you can you leave the little tops the, on if you the like. The apple kind of way. Yeah, you can uh, leave the tops on. Sure. So you get this all peeled. All righty. And, um, and you yeah. cover in the, and you steam the turnips and the carrots in here uh, for about 30 minutes until they're tender. You have to really get... I like to see them separately because I don't want the whole taste of turnip in the in the broth of the meat. Mm. So um, turn this on high and steam it here. Then steam the carrots, and we have some steamed already. So now I'm just getting the cabbage ready for our, our corned beef and cabbage. Okay. Parsley, you can flavor the broth. This is the same broth that the meat was cooked in. Mm. So the carrots, the turnips uh, were cooked already. Mm. Then to uh, just steam the cabbage, oh, you have some potatoes. New, new and, potatoes. Yeah, you have to have potatoes. Yeah. Yeah, um, gotta have potatoes. And we boil those for a little while and, and salt the water, taste it a little bit and see if it's salty. No, oh, that tastes salty enough. Good? I'd say so. Yep. And then, so boil these until they just start getting tender and then add your cabbage wedges. Um, and they're not, it's not quite ready um, for the cabbage. Wait till but this boils. is what it looks like mm. when it's all oh, it looks done. Great. So mm. all of this is done and you can arrange if you like, you want to arrange these on the platter, and I'll put the meat over here. Okay. And you can put this All on right. the platter, this, okay. and then we'll put the carrots Should on. I use this? But, um, sure. And then slice the meat across the grain. See, the grain is going this way. And so cut Against across the grain. The, yeah, across the grain. Not and like shaving, where you want to shave with the grain. No, but look how beautiful this beef, oh look how gosh. beautiful this, this corned really beef nice. looks. And use a real mm. sharp knife. And, uh, oh, your guests, your family will love this corned beef. Now, if you didn't corn your beef two weeks ago, uh, you can, of course, buy a corned beef at the grocery store and cook it just this way. It's a simple dish. The baby carrots for color and oh. freshness. I just think this looks mm. so good. What else could we make but wonderful corned beef and cabbage? And uh, I don't think that this is unhealthy food. I think the way that no. we make it, uh, corning it ourselves, no preservatives whatsoever. Uh, you've eaten corned beef and cabbage. I have, and, and I would call this comfort food. Yeah. And you can buy <laughs> corned beef, you know, it's already made, and you buy it in that that uh, plastic bag that it comes in. But let me show you how easy it is, because this takes three to six days, depending on how corny you like your beef. And I don't mean corn like corn, but uh, pickled. So we, um, we need uh, to have eight, um, seven quarts of hot water. And we're using hot water because we really have to dissolve all the spices and the mm -hmm. salt. This is pickling salt. You buy that at the hardware store or at the gourmet store. One teaspoon of pepper. That's uh, yeah, two cups of, of pickling salt. A quarter of a cup of dry mustard. That's the Coleman's mustard, English. I know it well. And 10 uh, cloves of garlic. You just peel them and leave them whole. And pickling spices, so two tablespoons. So let that cool, that liquid. Make sure the mustard is all dissolved. Let it cool, and then we have one cooled over here, Jane. Okay. That's um, right here. We're going to add this beautiful piece of uh, beef brisket. This is mm. eight pounds of beef brisket. Trim off most of the fat, and just put that right in your pickling brine. And to keep the meat submerged, I always put a plate right inside. Find a plate upside down. And if you want to really make sure that it's um, submerged, put a, oh, like a bottle in there or something filled with water. Uh, but not, don't put metal. Uh, put, because it's pickling, you don't want anything corrosive in that pickling uh, juice. And we have a piece already corned. This has been in here for six days. So we put this in the fridge. Oh, well, that's yeah. a bit we uh, take a shelf. <laughs> oh, take a shelf or in the cold porch, if you have a really cold porch or, you know, in a cold cellar, that's where it usually would have been brined. But look what, look what oh happens goodness, to the meat. Yes. It shrinks and it also turns a uh, darker color, sort of grayish. I have actually rinsed all the brine off. You rinse it under cold water and let it just sit until you prepare the rest of the cooking ingredients. This is a great pot. Le Creuset makes these big pots. So put your rinsed beef right into the bottom of the pot and um, then you're going to cook it for about two hours with two celery ribs that are cut up into small pieces. 
uh, some onions, two big onions that are cut into, peeled and cut into quarters. And all of this actually is in the final dish. And we need some garlic, 10 cloves. So if you have a garlic clove like that, we want it smashed so that it uh, really does um, uh, give off all its flavor in the broth. Just take your knife and go like that. And the peel, come, the outside of the garlic just comes right off so easily. They're so beautiful and large, these garlic Love cloves. Love so garlic. Just put those in. And this really doesn't make it so garlicky as much as flavorful. It's right. really fantastic. So now cover this with water and then bring it to a boil, reduce it to a simmer and cook it for about two hours. And then you're ready to add the rest of the vegetables. Now look, after two hours, wow. everything smells delicious. The beef is down in there. The onions are tender. The beef is very tender. And it's just all the, there was a little bit of fat on that beef. It's almost all kind of melted off into the broth. And now you can add the rest of your ingredients, like uh, five large red potatoes cut in half. 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 To go with broth. <laughs> and, uh, and then carrots, and we have three carrots peeled and cut. Oop, are you okay? That's good, I can okay. verify it's hot. Oh, oh, it's very hot. <laughs> three parsnips, if you like parsnips, these are perfect and they're in season right now. My favorite vegetable is parsnips. Oh, I love, I love parsnips. I love parsnips too, and salsify. Do you like salsify? Do you grow that? The I haven't plant? grown that, no, I oh, should try that one. It's very good too. Three turnips peeled, white turnips peeled, and I hope we're gonna have enough room in here. Are we gonna have enough room in here, Wes? Yeah. Yep. We are, he says. <laughs> it's not going to overflow in any way. It's so nice when everything's prepared. And look at this beautiful cabbage, one big head of cabbage. Make sure that the, each wedge has a little bit of the center rib in it so it doesn't fall apart. So that way you can get this right out and put this in. It will just I don't know, fit. that just doesn't look like it's gonna work out to me. Oh, it will. Wes says so. He's, he's done his math, has he? <laughs> if Wes says so, it usually works. Cram it in. Cram it in. Now. Cram them in, right? Cram them in. <laughs> but they, they will get squished in by themselves. You'll just put this top on like that. <laughs> and it will it's go down, down nicely. <laughs> and a little bit of liquid has bubbled over, but that's OK. Mm. Now, here it is, our entire boiled dinner. And you try to get everything out in beautiful wedges and uh, make sure that you have um, on the side, mustard, uh, you have vinegar, and you have a lot of horseradish. Jane Seymour and everything in the studio is green. Not only is my sweater and my beads. Look at the beads. Beautiful, beautiful Irish jade from Chinatown. Four dollars, I was told. We love these, don't you? They go. I, they I actually found, go I found with a scarf that I think looks like cabbage. Oh, it does. Doesn't it does. It's all ribbed like cabbage. Ribbed just like cabbage. It's gorgeous, like Savoy cabbage. <laughs> and, and everybody came dressed. The, the you know what? It's the beauty of. Wonderful email. We email our guests that are coming on the show and we say, please come dressed in green. And they do. And thank you so much for participating. It's really fun. And your funny little hat. Look at you. How cute. <laughs> Well, now that we've brined our beef, and I've actually rinsed all the brine off. You rinse it under cold water and let it just sit until you prepare the rest of the cooking ingredients. This is a great pot. Le Creuset makes these big pots. Do you use those on the agua cooker? I do. I was just saying, at my house in England, it's over a thousand years old, and oh. I hope one day you'll come and cook oh, there I would with love us. To we've see just that. been uh, redoing it, but I love these. Le Creuset is amazing. They're fantastic. So put your rinsed beef right into the bottom of the pot and um, then you're going to cook it for about two hours with two celery ribs that are cut up into small pieces, uh, some onions, two big onions that are cut into, peeled and cut into quarters. And all of this actually is in the final dish. And we need some garlic, 10 cloves. So if you have a garlic clove like that, we want it smashed so that it uh, really does um, uh, give off all its flavor in the broth. Just take your knife and go like that and the peel, come, the outside of the garlic just comes right off so easily, and your garlic clove is actually uh, peeled. So, somewhat peeled. Except for that one. No, no, it's peeled. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. They're so beautiful and large, these garlic Love cloves. Love so garlic. Just put those in. And this really doesn't make it so garlicky as much as flavorful. It's right. really fantastic. So, now cover this with water, 
and then bring it to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, and cook it for about two hours. And then you're ready to add the rest of the vegetables. So this is fantastic. Now, how do you divide your time between, you're filming where, in California? Um, I film all over the place, but I've been filming in California, but I go back to England as often as I can. I love it there. It's oh, you do? amazing. We have this huge house, and we also have a cottage and a church there. And, uh, you know, we go back there with friends, and it's, that's where I become a real foodie. Yeah. And that's also where I do a lot of painting. Oh, I it's wonderful. I get very creative when I'm there. And you're in Bath? In Bath, uh -huh. yes. Bath to bath. all of us. <laughs> bath. And, yes. Uh, well, so Bath is a Roman city, as you know. It's so beautiful, it's amazing. too. Oh, it's so beautiful. Now, look, after two hours, wow. everything smells delicious. The beef is down in there. The onions are tender. The beef is very tender. And it's just all the... There was a little bit of fat on that beef. It's almost all kind of melted off into the broth. And now you can add the rest of your ingredients, like uh, five large red potatoes cut in half. 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 To go with broth. <laughs> and, uh, and then carrots. And we have three carrots peeled and cut. Ooh, are you okay? That's good. I can okay. verify it's hot. Oh, oh it's very oh. hot. <laughs> three parsnips. If you like parsnips, these are perfect, and they're in season right now. My favorite vegetable is parsnips. Oh, I love, I love parsnips. I love parsnips, too. And salsify. Do you like salsify? Do you grow that? The I Easter haven't plant? grown that. No, I oh, should try that one. It's very good, too. Three turnips peeled, white turnips peeled. And I hope we're going to have enough room in here. Are we going to have enough room in here, Wes? Yeah. Yep. We are, he says. <laughs> it's not going to overflow in any way. It's so nice when everything's prepared. And look at this beautiful cabbage, one big head of cabbage. Make sure that the, each wedge has a little bit of the center rib in it so it doesn't fall apart. So that way you can get this right out and put this in. It will just I don't know. Fit. That just doesn't look like it's going to work out to me. Oh, it will. Wes says so. He's, he's done his math, has he? <laughs> if Wes says so, it usually <laughs> works. Cram it in. Cram it in. Now. Cram them in, right? Cram them in. <laughs> but they, they will get squished in by themselves. You'll just put this top on like that. <laughs> and it will it's go down, down nicely. <laughs> and a little bit of liquid has bubbled over, but that's okay. And if you have the aga cooker, oh, it's so perfect, oh, isn't, isn't it? Oh, it heavenly? I love oh, the is. idea. You know, when you have a, a lovely old house like that and you have people there, the smells, you just cook so beautifully slowly. Oh, I just adore it. Mm. Now, here it is, our entire boiled dinner. And so you can call this corned beef and cabbage. You can call it boiled dinner. And you try to get everything out in beautiful wedges. And uh, make sure that you have... Um, on the side, mustard, uh, you have vinegar, and you have a lot of horseradish. I like horseradish. Do you? I love horseradish. Yeah. Never yeah. enough horseradish. Okay, so mm. here we have fantastic. Oh, the cabbage looks good. Now, if you like really greener cabbage than this, not quite so cooked, you can add the cabbage at the last. And you should also, oh, the potatoes are fork tender. This is really... Could you have turnips. a piece of Brussels sprouts? Um, well, I think Brussels sprouts are a little strong for this. Too strong? Yeah. And, uh, you know, Brussels sprouts, I like not cook too long. That's so. true. Now, I'm trying to find the beef. <laughs> Where's the beef? <laughs> it has to be in here. Wes, is the beef in here? Yeah. Do you right promise? Down there at the bottom. Here, it here it is. Oh, and it is Might so you tender. Need this? this is. Oh, wait. Mm, it's stuck. There you go. <laughs> it is stuck down there. almost like surgery. Mm -hmm. Here it's it is. Of Dr. Quinn here. <laughs> oh, it's definitely beautiful. <laughs> can you move that pad? Can you move that pad? Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, no. No I, need a, no, I need to put it on the board. Put it on the board. Yeah, I need to slice it. So now one thing that you have to remember to do is always when you're slicing it, cutting it across the grain. So here's the grain going this way. And make sure that you cut across the grain. So you hold it with the fork. And it is so tender, wow. it will make the best corned beef sandwiches. It makes the best corned beef dinner, and your family will love you for thinking about them on St. Patrick's Day in such a nice way. Thanks so much for being here. So corned salmon, um, same process? You brine it for a long time or a short time? It's a very short process. And what we're doing is taking some of the flavors that you know from corned beef, and most notably the coriander seeds and the bay leaf, a little bit of garlic, and incorporating them into something that's a bit more modern, easier to access, a little bit quicker. So that's the brine we're gonna make right now? That's right, it's more okay. of a dry rub. So okay. we're gonna take the uh, salt, mix in the brown sugar, 
Mm. And the, the recipe's on our website, so you'll be able to get this, all of this? Yeah, all those coriander seeds. A quarter of a seeds. cup of coriander. Yeah. Uh, lovely black pepper. Slightly, slightly crushed? So, yes, coarsely crushed, exactly. <gasps> Garlic. Yeah, and I think we're gonna actually tear these bay leaves up a little bit okay. because they're so fragrant and aromatic. Beautiful. There we go. So just pour this over? You can do it on both sides, yeah, a little on the top, okay. a little on the bottom. And uh, what a it's nice gonna, rub this is. Yeah, it's it's fragrant. A, uh, exactly. The idea is to have some of those same flavors, you know, the coriander, the bay leaf, uh, the garlic from the uh, corned beef. And of course, corned beef isn't traditional in Ireland. What they do is cabbage and and bacon. Not oh, uh, oh. the corned beef is much more of an American adaptation. Oh, they didn't have that much beef there, right? <laughs> no, it was a big deal yeah. beef in those days. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Like so cabbage. now is that already brined? Yep. Okay. So what do you do with that? There's so, the salmon already. That stays how long? Uh, 45 minutes. 45 minutes only, okay, you at get, room temperature. That's right, you give it a, 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 quick, a quick rinse and then pat it dry, and these are looking, it's okay. very important when you're searing something for it to have a very dry exterior. You're so we're gonna to put this it? in, yeah, we're gonna put it, what we call the skin side down there. Get a little more heat and going there. Go the other way, yeah. And um, since it's cured, it's gonna cook a little bit more quickly than um, what kind of oil it, do you have? raw. And I always use uh, grapeseed oil. Okay. I think grapeseed oil is uh, way underrated. It's lovely. It's got a wonderful viscosity. You use it in dressings. It's really, really a great thing. Okay, so let that cook. How much on each side? We're going to do about three minutes on each side. Okay, so I'll watch that, and you can proceed with the, with the uh, vegetables. Okay, so next thing we're going to have is a, a, a wonderful fingerling potatoes. And again, what we're looking for is for the food to taste like it, it originally tasted. You know, very. You uh, put the potatoes in cold water? Yes, bring okay. it to cold water, a little salt and pepper. And since we were using leek in the next part of the recipe, what we're gonna have is all these leek greens left over. And I like to incorporate them. I'm just gonna give them a quick slice. So just put those in with the potatoes, that's Into good. Into the potatoes, yeah. yeah. So I like to use as much as we can at utilization, but it's also gonna give the potatoes a nice flavor. And cook until they're just tender, or? We're gonna cook them just 15 minutes, and it's important not to overcook them. You want them just sort of fork tender okay. and not overcooked. And again, you wanna taste that lovely skin all that, all that great uh, organic oh, okay. heirloom is this potatoes. Too, is this cooking too high? That's perfect. Okay. So that's, that'll be turning like in one minute, right? That's right. Okay. Next thing we're gonna be doing is we're going to wilt, actually what we, the term we use is sweat the leeks. So we're taking the white oh, portion the white only part. of the leeks. Okay. So we have those lovely greens from before. In butter? Yes. I love leeks in butter. Isn't that the only thing it, to cook them it in? It can't be a bad thing. Right. And a little bit of water, and again the water keeps it Sweating, softening. You don't want any sort of caramelization. You want them to be sweet, okay. fragrant, and bright. So once those are sweated, I think we have some sweated ones there. That's right. Okay. So once we have the sweated, oh, pardon me. Yeah. Uh, the the sweated leeks. What we're going to do is to wilt the cabbage. Should I turn this? Um, Give it one more second, perhaps. Okay. Um, got... Wilt the cabbage, and it's the same process. We're using Savoy cabbage, which has got this sort of lovely. Yeah, crinkly leaves, right? Crinkly leaves, that's I exactly love, right. I love Savoy. And we're gonna put some cardamom in there, which I think is so aromatic Ground and- Ground cardamom. Mm. Under, underutilized. So we put a little of that in there. And this may need a little bit more water as it goes, because what we wanna do is to just, there you go, a little bit, perfect. Stir and braise and turn, and we're, we're just wilting it. It's only gonna take about eight to 10 minutes. I think the salmon is okay, ready you to- go, You go turn. Okay. I'll, I'll stir. I'll turn the you salmon. Do, you do the final touches because it's so important. We're gonna make the sauce. Right, in order to give us the bright green Irish color we're looking for, we're gonna dump it into some boiling oh, what is that? salted parsley water. Parsley and dill and, oh, tarragon. Parsley, dill, and tarragon, thank and, you. And chives. Right, so we're gonna give it a quick blanch just to break it down a little bit, and then we can probably just take it out and shock it very quickly. And the idea is you're setting the color. You don't want that chlorophyll to, right. to darken it all, as right. it might do in a... Oh, wait a minute, here, put this up here. Thank you. And then we're gonna shock it, which is okay. really important to, again, sort of set and stop that cooking. And the next thing that I often do is to take the herbs, sort of squeeze them out a little oh, bit. Yeah, you don't want the water. Absolutely not. And then I'm gonna chop them on the board and what this does is it helps the blender do its job a lot more efficiently. So we're just gonna go very quickly over with a knife, as if you were mincing chives. Practice your knife skills, you at home. <laughs> Look how nice first, this is. Wow. First thousand times is tricky. Right. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. So we're gonna get this 
into our blender, a little bit of water, and we, uh, we use a little bit of ice. And the oh. ice helps to keep it nice and cold. Oh, good, a little water too? Yeah, use all that so water. Like three tablespoons of water. Yep. And you might have a little more water on hand in case you need some more. Each okay. blender blends differently. And this is a lovely Vita Prep, and it's doing an amazing job. So the ice is what? Ice is going to keep it nice and cold. And we're probably going to need some more water in there. Look at that. Lovely. I'm going to let that blend for a while. So it's very, very smooth, okay. that's right. So we have one already made over there, but you can see, do you add anything to that? Uh, no, when we heat it up, what we're gonna do. Oh, here we have it, already right. nicely blended. The lovely green coulis. And we're gonna add some of this, I assume, lovely Kerrygold yes, butter. Yes, it is, Kerrygold. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna whisk that in. You know, we'll check the seasoning, taste it with salt and pepper. And then to plate it, it's very simple. We'll just pull some potatoes, which are here, you make Perfectly cooked. Here, we have two plates, one for you and one for me. Okay. And the salmon looks amazing. Yes. So I'll put a piece on each plate or just yes, put perfect. the sauce no, first? Yes, perfect. No, go ahead. Mm, how so beautiful. A little bit around the outside. <laughs> See, people love this kind of tradition with a twist. Irish soda bread is very easy to make and very delicious to eat and I serve it every single St. Patrick's Day. So uh, to one and a third cups of whole milk, add one third of a cup of apple cider vinegar. If you watch closely, the milk starts to bubble immediately and starts to curdle, to acidify. And into a big bowl, three cups of all-purpose flour, I generally use Hecker's flour for pretty much all my baking needs. A teaspoon of baking powder. Make sure that it's fresh, it hasn't expired, you haven't had it hanging around in your cupboard for a year. One teaspoon of baking soda, two and a half teaspoons of salt, and I'm using kosher salt. Very important to have enough salt in this bread. And you can whisk this together. Now you can add another essential ingredient to this, and it's called coarse bran. This is the outer coating of the wheat. It comprises about 14% of the wheat by weight, um, and it is where a lot of the nutrition in the wheat berry is. And it adds a very nice flavor to the Irish soda bread. So we're making it healthier and better for you. So here's our dry ingredients, into which we cut butter. Now, I find that the cutting in of the butter is accomplished much more easily when you have the butter cut into little quarter-inch cubes like this. It's actually four tablespoons of butter. This is just sliced from um, a stick of butter. And if it's cold enough, this is very easily accomplished. Then you just stack it like this, make sure the butter's cold, and then cut crosswise. And you have all the little cubes of butter that you need. You can do this all ahead of time and keep the butter in the refrigerator until you're ready to form uh, whatever you're making. But when I make pot brise or pot sucre, I always cut the butter up like that. And here it is, four tablespoons of butter and just quarter inch pieces. Now this. I'll just put right back in the fridge and I'll have it for the next loaf of Irish soda bread. It creams easily, it's very easy. So now cut with your old fashioned pastry cutter, and uh, I love these, and just cut your butter into the dry ingredients. This is a very easy one bowl bread. You want it to look like coarse meal, like you always say in the recipes, coarse meal. Let's see how the milk is doing. Oh my gosh, it is already curdled. It's like magic, it really works. And it's flavorful and fragrant. Now we're gonna to add to this our raisins. One cup of dark raisins for this recipe, but you can use golden raisins. Make sure I kind of pack in the raisins. I love raisins in this bread. So add your 
raisins, and you can do this by hand. And very important to have lots of caraway seeds. This is the essential ingredient for rye bread. It's an anise flavored seed. One quarter cup we're going to add. Gives a crunchiness and uh, an extraordinary flavor to the soda bread. And then we're gonna stir in the buttermilk. Your homemade buttermilk. And that's it, really easy. Stir it in, moisten every particle of flour, but don't overwork. And I must tell you, the apple cider is very, very fragrant. And now on a lightly floured surface, form your ball of bread. Flour on the crust does not hurt. In fact, oftentimes if you buy soda bread, you'll see it's very white and floury. Use a bench scraper, give it just one or two light kneads, and put this right on parchment lined baking sheet. You can dust it with a little bit more flour on the top. Cut a big X in the surface of the bread and pop this into your 350 degree preheated oven and set your timer for an hour and a quarter. And now I think our Irish soda bread is done. It certainly looks done. Let it cool on a rack, and you can cut it while it's still slightly warm and serve it with Irish butter, or wait till it completely cools and give it to your friends. A Reuben sandwich, warm, juicy layers of corned beef, melted Swiss cheese, sauerkraut, and Russian dressing. Sandwich between toasted rye bread. That's what a Reuben is all about. I'm buttering the outside of two nice slices of seeded rye. And this sandwich was thought to have been created by a New York delicatessen owner, Arthur Rubin, who reportedly made it with ham for Charlie Chaplin's leading lady in a film shot in the early 1900s. How's that for a bit of trivia? Well, here now, put the buttered side down and start layering. This is thinly sliced corned beef. And you need about, per sandwich, three ounces because the best delis don't skimp. So we're going to be the best deli making this Reuben sandwich. And fold it over. Try to make the meat as even thickness as possible. Yum. And then we have lovely Swiss cheese. And another layer. And, oh, we're missing the Russian dressing. So. I think homemade Russian dressing is the best. A third of a cup of mayo, some sweet pickle relish, just about two tablespoons, some ketchup, again about two tablespoons. Stir this together. And this you can just keep in a little jar in the refrigerator for your liverwurst sandwiches, your corned beef sandwiches, your Reuben sandwiches. A nice sprinkling of black pepper, about a half a teaspoon of salt, and secret ingredient, Worcestershire sauce. Just about a teaspoon. Mmm, yummy. That is a very nice Russian dressing. So, oh, you could also put a little bit of lemon juice in here. I think that would be a good idea. If your lemon has one of those little knobbins on it, you can cut that off. It squeezes better. Just about a teaspoon of lemon juice. That is good Russian dressing. So now sauerkraut, about a half a cup of nice German sauerkraut, which is basically fermented pickled cabbage. And put a lot of Russian dressing right here on the unbuttered side of the bread. The buttered side is going to be cooked, and that's what helps toast the rye bread. So a nice slathering of Russian dressing, and put that right over. Mm, very nice. 
and get this into a slightly warm pan and let it toast both sides. And so now when you think it's nice and brown, flip it. And that looks really good. Just about done. The cheese is nice and soft. The bread is nice and toasted. Remove it to a board because I think you're going to want to cut this in half. So pretty. Oh, wow. This is a great looking sandwich. And warning, this sandwich is so juicy and so delicious that you might need a few extra napkins. Eat this up while it's still hot and toasty. I think you'll really enjoy all the sandwiches I showed you. They do make a meal. And now for the rye bread. A half a cup of water, no warmer than 115 degrees. Add to that two packages of the active dry yeast. And stir the packages of yeast into your half a cup of warm water. And add approximately two teaspoons of honey. Let this crew for approximately five minutes. Now, into your mixer, one and three quarters cup of warm water, three tablespoons more of honey, and four tablespoons of butter, melted and slightly cooled two tablespoons of caraway seeds. Caraway is a member of the fennel family. Oh, and four and a half teaspoons of salt. And now your yeast mixture, which is nice and creamy and just showing signs of life. So mix that up. And you start adding your flour, two and a half cups of rye flour first. And four cups of all-purpose flour. So I think this dough has been kneaded very nicely. Now you can turn it out. Just turn it right out onto a floured surface. You can see how elastic the dough is and how nicely textured it is. And again, turn with a bench scraper. Very nice dough. Mm. And you can make this into a free-form loaf, like rye bread is sold in the stores. Or, or you can bake it in a loaf pan. Put it in a buttered bowl and cover it with plastic wrap. Again, to prevent sticking, you can just spray a little bit of vegetable spray on the plastic. Let it rise for approximately an hour to an hour and a half. So the dough has doubled in size. You can, again, deflate it, get it out of the bowl, divide it in half, and form it into two equal size loaves. And roll this up. Tuck the ends in. This will rise nicely in the pans. And it takes another hour or so to have the dough double in size again. And wash with egg white and water. and sprinkle with a few caraway seeds. Cover with your plastic wrap, and in an hour, it'll be ready to go into the oven. The bread is doubled in size. Uncover it and get it right into the oven. The oven's set at 450 degrees. We're gonna reduce that temperature immediately to 400. And these loaves should be done in approximately 45 minutes.